Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Jgod. Normally I like to do subscriber breakdowns and recently I was able to break down some gameplay of one of my teammates and that teammate was Carnage Dismo. Seemed like you guys really enjoyed that video and even asked for some of my other teammates to be broken down. So in today's video we'll actually be breaking down Dexbot's gameplay and if there's any other of my team members from Carnage Clan that you'd like to see a breakdown from, let me know down in the comments section below. So we can go ahead and see if we can get their gameplay on hand and get a breakdown. So for those of you that don't know who Dexbot is, he is a passionate Call of Duty supporter and has been since Call of Duty 4. So if you guys are interested in following or subscribing to Dexbot at all, I will leave a link to his channel as well as his Twitter down in the description below. And feel free to let him know that JGod sent you. Also, if you do enjoy the video in any way, once this video gets to 500 likes, I'll start working on that next Carnage Clan members breakdown. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the breakdown. So these are your first time to my channel. Typically, this is something I do on the channel where I kind of walk you through the player's gameplay. And I typically try to explain what they do really well or maybe what they have an area of opportunity for. Since Dexbot is a really good player, we're probably gonna focus mainly on the things that he does really well because there's probably not going to be a ton of area of opportunity. Also, as a quick disclaimer, since this was recorded from theater gameplay, there's going to be less visible recoil on the weapon when he's actually firing. So what you're going to see right now that Dexbot is doing really well is he's centering this doorway, pretty much pre-aiming it if anyone walks by. Then he comes around this corner and he actually sees a couple enemies and he peeks the spawn before he rushes it because he wants to make sure he's not going to get shot from behind comes around for an easy flank. That's definitely a smart move. A lot of times people will tend to fire their weapon the second they see someone. Since he was kind of out of position when he got shot at, he made sure he moved closer to his teammates so he can be in a better position. Went ahead and take that guy out. And now he's in a good spot, especially with his little rolly drone. He was able to spam square at the right moment, able to win this gunfight, and his teammate was able to outflank the enemy. And now that he has that UAV, he's going to have a little bit better map awareness. You can see where all of his teammates are pretty much behind him. He's kind of the farthest pushed up person other than the person that just rushed the enemy spawn. And you can see on the right side of the map, his teammate just gets obliterated and he's able to push for the perfect flank. He comes around the corner, makes sure he doesn't give away his position. They didn't see him. He takes out the guy in the back, but since he's going to be outnumbered two to one, he goes ahead and repositions where his teammates are. Pushes the spawn, able to take both of these guys out pretty effectively. Now that he's been able to call in that sniper's nest, he knows he has a little bit of area support, but you can see on the mini map, there's a couple enemies this way. After he peeked the spawn real quick, he goes ahead and rotates, making sure he's in a good spot. And since he knew there was a second guy, he was immediately able to snap on and pretty much take that guy out. And it does look like there's one guy in this back spawn, but it looks like that sniper's nest absolutely destroyed that guy. And you can see that one of his teammates ends up spawning on him right now. So now you got a confirmed spawn flip. He should be safe calling in this hellstorm. Although no one pops up until that last second, he's still able to get a double kill and pretty much has solid control of the map. There's a teammate that just is running with him. He's already 20 and one, so he's doing very well. Calls out the Tempest, which we all know is very strong and almost overpowered in the right hand. So right now, when you look at the mini map, you can see where all the teammates are. Pretty much everyone's at mid map or maybe crossed it just a little bit. And what that's going to indicate is there's probably going to be a likelihood of a spawn flip after he kills all these people. You can see how his teammate just pushed through the spawn and he immediately is thinking to rotate after he gets this kill. He ends up taking that guy out. Luckily, that guy was standing in the way that protected him from getting Tempest. And now he knows they're coming from behind. He automatically rotates, assuming they're coming from that angle. And he's positioned in a way that he's going to win that gunfight on that head glitch. At this point, since there's not really a UAV in the air, it's a little hard to determine where everyone is at on the map. You can see where his teammates are. They are pushed up in this middle section. But there's not a lot to go off of. Calls in the Hellstorm, ends up taking a couple out, but you can see that one enemy slipped around the back. So what he does is peek this little area, and then by the time he feels like there's a little bit of a void behind him in this back area, you can see he immediately pushes through this area, knowing that maybe there's that guy who slipped through. Where is this guy? Where is he hiding? That's why he comes around and peeks that area the way he does because on the hellstorm you can see that that guy snuck around the map ends up absolutely demolishing that guy and ends up with another sniper's nest and the reason why that guy melted so dang fast is because he already pre-aimed and centered his weapon right at that head glitch that's very common so when the guy came around like he just did right now he's already in position to take that guy out goes ahead and pushes a little bit towards mid map and one of the benefits of jumping on this little water fountain is you provide yourself with the head glitch but also you get different vantage points so you can go ahead and slip out into cover and reposition very easily so if you take damage from an angle that maybe you weren't expecting it you're able to reposition and then come to full health and then go ahead and re-engage knowing exactly where the enemy shot you from so at this point it's a little hard to tell exactly where the enemies are because you can see how his teammates are spread out a little bit behind him to the right and a little bit behind him to the left 
So either he's going to peek this way and outgun that guy, which he ended up losing that gunfight. Or he could have gone the other way and then there could have been someone behind him. So he was really in a bad spot either way, in my opinion, based off of the minimap telling him. And the other unfortunate part about that gunfight is if he would have waited maybe one or two seconds a little bit longer, his teammates would have come around and flanked and probably destroyed that guy. He would have never got into that gunfight to begin with. Right there, he comes around the corner, gets on the head glitch, kind of peeks out a little too easy, and he gets outgunned because it's 2v1. So you can see right there, he has 35 out of the 68 kills. So he has over half the kills in this match, and he's going to get the majority of the kills, as you'll see as you continue to watch the gameplay. Right here, you can see he's playing a little bit aggressively because he's trying to build that streak up, trying to chase those kills, trying to get as many kills as you can. Obviously, in TDM, that is the goal. And you'll notice the same thing happened that happened when we were breaking down Dismo's gameplay. And that is the player goes into an aggressive play style once that streak has ended. You can see in the Dismo gameplay, as soon as he died off that streak, he started playing really aggressive. Still got a ton of kills because they're great players. They're able to pre-aim, reposition the right way, take advantage of their streaks, and then go ahead and get some nice little feeds. And what I think happens more often than not for really good players is they'll play aggressively. And as soon as they get on that 15, 20 is streak, they start to slow down a little bit, play as smart as possible. Because at the end of the day, they do want that nuclear streak or whatever the case is. So there's plenty of different styles when you actually play the game. You could play very conservative and slow, or you could play very fast, aggressive, but still smart. But at the end of the day, you can only choose the play style that's going to work best for you. Obviously, if you don't have great gun skill, I probably wouldn't recommend running around like a chicken with your head cut off aggressive because you can't rely on that gun skill. You're going to lose a lot of gunfights. So you have to be very methodical about how you move around the map. Play it as smart as possible. Make sure you're on head glitches when you need to be on head glitches. And any 50-50 gunfights are minimized if you're not 100% confident that you're going to win those gunfights. And as you invest time in the game and improve on your areas of weakness, you'll be able to get to those points where you feel a little bit more confident and you can push and be a little bit more aggressive. And I think that about wraps up the video. If you did enjoy the video in any way or found any of the tips helpful, please hit that like button. If you're brand new to the channel, I typically cover Call of Duty news, in-game updates, best class setups, subscriber breakdowns, as well as other tip and trick videos on how to improve a Call of Duty. Thank you for all the support on the channel. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.